Hi guys. So, in terms of building inverters, EJ002 Pro is one of the best inverter card you can ever use. But we all know that this card has limitation, which is or which are automation and basically charging. Which is why we bring you the EGS Pro. Yeah, no, not this. This. Yes, this is the EGS Pro that can fix all the limitations of this EGS002. Now, stay tuned while we examine the futures and test the futures of this card for your DIY inverters. Okay, so the inversion is on now. Let's check the output voltage. Take access to 275 I will adjust that later. The, the, the main point is that the charging. So look at the EGS. The EGS is working. So the inversion is in process. Now I'm going to turn on the charging. Then we'll see the charging current. is what the inverter is currently pulling from the battery as you can see it's a 24 volt system the inverter setup is a 24 volt system so i'm turning on the charging now yep that's changed now the charging is going to start so I use PID algorithm. Currently the charging current is set to 25 amps. It's going to increase gradually till it gets to 25. You can set it to 40 amps. Yes. Even this particular one can charge up to 40 amps. But you need a very, very big MOSFET like very very big and a very big cooling system which is fine because the temperature currently um, we set the temperature to 100 degree once it gets to 100 degree the temperature of the of the low side is going to stop charging here is the temperature sensor so if you are using if you want to charge with 40 amps and your cooling system is not very high it's going to be stopping in the middle okay it's now at 20 amps it's still going to go till it gets to 25 amps so it's not going to be oscillating between 24 25 or 26 like one amps oscillation that's because we use currently i'm using p proportion not the pid i was having a time tuning it yeah it's still going to go so this is the board working this is the current sensor acs 758 don't mind what this displays <laughs> this dragon this, this display is writing yeah to 20 yeah 20.9 amps so accurate we choose this current sensor because the principle of operation is more or less like this clamp meter no resistance is very very accurate this current sensor so um this video is just the first part there's going to be continuation i'm going to be reviewing this board like this particular one i'm going to review every part of it the function of it what each part stands for everything 
then the code and the files of this is going to be in our github account then um yeah the current sensor i've talked about the current sensor there's nothing much the board is basically doing everything everything so in my next video we are going to review this board then in another one we are going to explain the code yes it doesn't matter the word you are coming from whether you are a digital electronics engineer like you are into programming or just analog this board you are going to be able to use everything yes we are going to make it so simple that even analog electronics engineers will be able to use it yeah now comes to the limitation of this board that's the limitation the limitation is that this chip yes but that's two chip which is this this one here sensing the means I needed to use interrupts but because I couldn't capture the zero crossing which is the rising and the falling edge I've not been able to do that on this chip so I just use a normal if statement if loop to capture that so the interrupt is affecting the changing over time now the limitation to this board is changing over time you are going to notice the changeover yes because it's going to off then pick back mostly when it's changing from never to inverter the second reason is that this card it has a soft start meaning Anytime it's starting an inversion, it's going to start from zero, then gradually increment to 20. So we can actually disable that, but I don't want to do that just yet. There's a reason why inverter has softer. So anytime this um, system is changing from NEPA to inversion, this stuff and uh, this soft start has to start from the beginning. So you will notice that the light went off, then peak again. So that's basically the limitation for now. We are going to work on that as time goes on because this board is going to have so many versions. Yes, so many versions. That's why we choose yes because it's too cheap. We've tried the Arduino version, the PIC version. We want to settle with this yes because it's too cheap based on so many reasons. Part of the reason is as time goes on, we are going to make it an IoT that is going to be connected to the cloud. Then, even as time goes on, we plan on using Python to code it also, which is um, part of our criteria again that, we, that made us choose this chip is that currently in the market is the cheapest. We want this card to be very cheap. We don't want it to be the cost to be so high that we're going to uh, push it out of the competition. So that's why we are choosing this particular kind of chip. So, but the limitation, part of the limitation of ESP32 is ADC. But we have been able to solve that with moving filter array. Yeah, we've been able to solve that. So basically now, the only challenges that this design has is the changeover. Now, um, I think that will be the end of the video so if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment section so that will be the end of the video um if you are new to the channel please subscribe share the video like um give us a thumbs up and comment whatever issue you are facing let us know we are the author of the board we are here to guide you through every part of any challenges that you may come across Thank you.